All right, moving on. So the next thing we're going to do is um, just kind of rehash what we did before, right, which was analysis, right? So now we're not just analyzing floor space. We're also analyzing, like, the coverage that you could create. Like, how many square feet of coverage is this particular definition creating as I'm doing something so intuitive as just playing around with a curve, right? So if I'm, if I'm reshaping this curve and retooling it, I want to make sure that it still meets the parameters that I'm trying to set for design. So um, what we have here is a set of surfaces, right? These surfaces have certain areas, right? So we're looking at areas of, I guess, 25 square feet apiece. So I drew it kind of small, but um, we're going to have a cumulative total, if we drop in mass addition, of um, 101 square feet. Okay, so let's say we wanted this thing to be 125 square feet of coverage. Um, so we can go to, if you recall our, our mesh, um, our, our mesh uh, method that we were actually using to render this thing. Um, actually, let's save this and let's open that up. So I'm gonna go to save this to a new folder. Seven, I'm going to call this um, wireframe canopy structure. All right, so let me open up this other one. Um, tower analysis. So here's the tower analysis that we did. Um, the parts that are important here, let's just kind of work our way backwards, right? We have um, the swatches that we want to test and, and render, dispatching something, um, because we're gonna have a list of items that are going to be rendered, which is going to be our surfaces, so we don't wanna copy this loft. We're gonna measure um, smaller than or greater than. We've already included mass addition, which is included in there. And then if we go back to what we're testing smaller than against, it is a numerical value, in this case, 10,000. So if I copy that, and uh, if you guys don't, I don't think I ever explained this in this class yet, <coughs> so when, to everyone. Um, but when you have multiple files open, you can actually switch back and forth. So if you click on the name of your file in the top right corner, you can see that you still have both files open after you've opened two. So you can go back into wireframe and paste it in place. And what we get is a way to test. So this is gonna be 125 square feet, like I'm trying to test four. Um, the number that I am testing is um, this. And uh, we're actually gonna swap this out for larger than because I have a minimum, right? I want the minimum to be or, or we could actually swap these out too. We can make this green. Um, yeah, let's just do that. Let's leave it at smaller. We're gonna make this one green and this one orange. So it's basically saying um, if it's not smaller than 125, meaning it's above 125, it will render as green. Um, and then the list. So the list is gonna be the surfaces. So let's jump into it. Right now it is orange because it is only 101 degrees, or 101 square feet. Did I say degrees a lot? Mm -hmm. oh, my bad. Um, I think I said degree like six times. So we can keep moving this thing up and increasing the overall square footage until um, it meets the requirement. Or if it's ever so slightly under, we can start remapping the curve to try and get it to, um, you know, work a little bit better there. So that's an option too. So anyway, that's, uh, I just wanted you guys to understand, like, how the intuitive nature of what we're doing here can actually render into something that is profoundly powerful, um, even, even, I guess, without... Um, I don't know where I was going with that thought, but um, <laughs> without, <laughs> so, sometimes I start a sentence without knowing where it's going.
Um, <laughs> yeah, I feel very much like Michael Scott right now. Um, so yeah, anyway, um, just know that you have tools like this at your disposal. Know that when you're trying to think through like how to create workflows for you, like a lot of times it's so much simpler than you can imagine. So now that we've started sort of weaving in a whole bunch of different fundamental lessons that I've taught you, I hope that you realize that I haven't really taught you that much in terms of like tools, right? Like so far we've used rotates, we've used um, move, we've um, amplified vectors, we've done some patterning, we've restructured lists, but like the tools that we're using to do that stuff is, is pretty easy stuff. It's just thinking creatively about how do I connect the dots between like restructuring a list and, and you know, doing like some sort of analysis or something like that to recreate some other wireframe structure, right? So um, going forward, we're gonna take the analysis component here to like the next level um, and we're going to start using um, Ladybug, and I'm not sure if we're going to use a lot of the Honeybee stuff, um, but we're going to start creating like really intense architectural conditions that are actually responding to real physical environment um, forces. So, just giving you a heads up on that. What's the equivalent for touch? I don't know. It's it it's like a Rhino-ish thing because like the the Rhino full suite or something like that with like all of the <laughs> add-ons you can get is called like the zoo. Right. Um, That's yeah. I, they are insects. I don't know why. I guess, I don't know. Maybe because it's like, actually my best guess is that they went with insects instead of animals um, because it's closer to programming and in programming you encounter bugs. Oh. Right? So that's my best guess. Did you know that the first computer bug was an actual bug? Yeah, so back when like computers were like as big as this thing that we have in the back of the room here, um, the, the first time a computer like shut down and like wasn't computing and just stopped computing was because there was an actual bug in the machine. And it couldn't, it couldn't function. Yeah. Um, they might actually have a picture of it. Hang on, let me see if I can find it. There you go. First computer bug ever found. There was an actual bug in the machine. Uh, it was a moth. Yeah. So that's where that term comes from. Fun fact. All right, so anyway, back to the grasshopper stuff. Um, what questions do you have about this? None. That's a good thing. That means every single one of you can now do this in perpetuity. Yeah. I don't know if I used that word right. I think I did. Okay. <laughs> Let me stop this video.